right, what's up, everybody? It's Valor Sacks here. First off, I want to thank all of you that recently subscribed to my channel because I made a cruise ship vlog style video. I understand that there's a great portion of you that want to hear stories like that, and this is one of them. So this was right around the year 2000. I was on this ship that was doing its inaugural cruise to South America. We hit all these wonderful ports in South America, but once you get down to the bottom, that's when things get really interesting. We hit this storm, and the storm was so bad, they sent a newsreel to India that our ship was lost at sea. Gone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Say hello to Davy Jones for us. <laughs> Ultimately, when something like that happens, it means that they've lost communication with the ship for a long enough period of time. And, and we were in this storm for a good minute. Now, if you're ever on a cruise ship and you're in a storm, you want to be face into the storm, face into the wind. You want your ship moving like this. You do not want your ship moving like this. When the ship starts moving like this, you got some problems. Our ship was in this position trying to get to this position. So they were trying to basically steer the ship into the wind, but the winds were so strong, our ship just slowly started tilting. And tilting. And tilting. Now, in nautical terms, this is called a list. So our ship was just listing further and further and further. Now, prior to all of that, there was this girl that worked up in the spa and it was her birthday. We had prepared this giant birthday bash for her. We had all this stuff set up. We were gonna all go up to the spa and like close the doors and invite special people in and the whole bit. And this ship didn't really have a crew bar on it. They basically just took a cabin, a large cabin, gutted it and turned that into a crew bar. So we didn't wanna do it there. This storm hits. Throughout the duration of this storm, the captain makes no announcement whatsoever. None. And over time, when the ship keeps listing and listing, people start freaking out because nobody really knows what's going on. We just know whatever's happening is getting worse. So in the thick of it, officers, crew, Staff, passengers were just running, running aimlessly around the ship with their life jackets on. I came out and saw this and I was like, nope. I went back to my cabin and just secured my stuff. Now, when you're in a storm, one of the things you want to do if you're on a ship right now and you one's coming, you want to take stuff and set it on the floor. Otherwise, the TV, all the stuff that's elevated, it's going down. It's going down. All the stuff in the shops, that stuff is going flying, man. You've seen these videos of cruise ships, people get caught in a storm, and you, when they're going like this, yeah, you see all that stuff just go flying. Pianos, all the jewelry in the shops, all the alcohol, all that stuff. Boom. So you go to your cabin and you secure this stuff. Now, South America is beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. And in fact... That contract that I was on is to this day the second best contract that I've ever been on. I mean, like we had overnights in Rio de Janeiro, which to this day is still one of the best and also one of the most terrifying times I've ever been on ships. But Rio was amazing to be a 20 some year old kid just out there. But you get down to the tip of South America and you run into the Cape. Cape Horn. Cape Horn ain't no joke. Now, apparently, this is where the two oceans meet, so you wind up with this temperature difference, and things just start getting very interesting. By the time it's all over and done with, everybody's just happy to be alive, you know what I'm saying? But we found out that they sent a newsreel to India saying that our ship was lost at sea. So all the Indians got to call home for free, and we were like, what the hell, man? What about us? So eventually they let all of us call home for free. But when that many people are tying up the line, you ain't getting a line out. So the next time we were in port, 
which was like soon the next day. You know, a lot of people got off. I got off the ship and to just call home, make sure nobody was freaking out. I was like, hey, man, how's it going there? It's like, hey, nice to hear from you. How you doing? It's like nobody had even heard about it in America. But in India, they were freaking out. <laughs> So I was on this ship that was doing its inaugural run to South America. And unfortunately for the company, they had screwed up all the booking. This worked out fantastically for the crew because we had less than half the ship's guest capacity on this ship for about a month. And I'm telling you right now, this was the absolute best month I have ever been on a cruise ship in my entire life because, man, the workload was cut in half for everybody. And that's just the capacity of people, not people actually showing up to events. So the actual workload was cut down to less than half for every crew member on the ship. So the crew bar uh, to that, I have never seen it like this since then or before then, but the crew bar was jam packed every single night. When you work on a cruise ship, you might see one person all the time, or you might see them one time and then not see them for the rest of your contract, or you might just sporadically see people. So when you are in a situation where you see the funnest people all the time, every night, it is some, it's unreal. It's an unreal experience. And everybody knew this wasn't going to last. So man, we went down to the bar and we just partied like we was crazy. <laughs> and then they finally wound up fixing the booking and we wound up getting all these guests on the ship. And it was like, eh, okay, well back to normal, but back to normal back then, this was around 2000. I mean, this was like insane party time. This is when it was really, really good to be on a cruise ship. I call it the golden era of cruising, not just for crew members, staff members, officers, whatever, but also for guests because they were at a time, at that time, they were actually trying to get a lower capacity of guests on the ship with a higher number of crew members on the ship. And I can remember on that ship, the entertainment department, we had our own lifeboat that we were assigned to. This never, ever, ever ever happens. The entertainment staff had their own lifeboat assignment. Nowadays, they cut ships in half, put a whole nother section of a ship, and then glued them back together so that way they can pack more sardines in the can and ultimately make more money. Now, finally, it just wasn't really financially feasible for the company to just have that kind of like guest to crew ratio and they but at any rate, man, these are some of the best times ever. So obviously our ship did not, it wasn't lost at sea. That contract was, there's a lot of stuff I just can't tell you, but just having those overnights in Rio de Janeiro was some of the best. Going to Ushuaia, the southernmost city on the planet, hitting up the other side of South America and then back again. So just all of South America was great. I speak broken Spanish. It's really bad. Been trying to speak Spanish for like, well, I'm not going to say how long, just a long time. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, this is what we did uh, after the storm. All right, so I am a musician saxophone player. For those of you who haven't tuned into my channel before, if you're a saxophone player, check out my stuff that I got here. Uh, if you like this kind of content, you want to see more of this kind of stuff, you want to support the channel, you can buy me a piece of cake. It's like a Kickstarter, Patreon type of program. You make a donation and that helps the channel grow a lot. All right, that's all I got for you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in. See ya!